the crew motor fest is out and in this quick video i'll show you how to optimize it to get the best performance possible on your pc while making it look as good as possible at the same time just keep in mind this game does have an fps lock of up to 60 fps so if you're comfortably hitting that then changing settings really isn't necessary this video will help performance on lower end systems and of course help fix stuttering and things like that too so without further ado i won't be jumping into the windows optimization at all instead in the description down below you'll find a Windows 10, 11, and NVIDIA optimization guides, as well as anything else relevant to this video. For the most part, we'll be jumping straight into the game itself. For this, I've got it on Ubisoft, and I'll be firing it up here. When we get in-game, simply head right into Options, then scroll down to Video, and inside of here, we'll start with the main page. First of all, Video Adapter should be your graphics card. If you're on a laptop with multiple graphics cards, or just a PC with multiple graphics cards, make sure your most powerful one is selected here. Display is your choice, then windowed mode, I'd usually recommend setting this to full screen, but for now we only have windowed and borderless as options, which is a little bit disappointing. And of course, the even more disappointing thing is the frame rate lock to either 60 or 30. That's it. There's no FPS higher than that, which is super disappointing to see on a PC port. Then VSync, I'd usually recommend to turn this off unless you're getting screen tearing with the top and the bottom half of your screen don't match up and anti-aliasing. Now, this is a curious one, whereas you Usually, there'll be a large difference, but we only have TAA and FXAA here. The good thing about this game is it does give you a preview on the right of exactly what option does what, but to be honest, there's not a huge difference between these two, except for maybe in leaves. This option is mainly down to your preference and really has very little impact on the game, maybe one FPS at best by enabling TAA and FXAA, but just TAA, that's as low as we can get. The final thing is render scale. You'll usually not lower this at all unless you want your screen to be super blurry for no reason or you're really clawing for FPS. Leave this on 1.0 for the best looking experience. And once you've gone through all of the quality settings, assuming you're still not reaching a satisfactory FPS mark, you can come back here and lower the render scale. But always try and leave it at one for the best looks. Then we'll head right to the quality section and in here we can begin customizing. Obviously, there's a nice preset at the very top from low, medium, high, and ultra, depending on what kind of graphics card you have, you can probably already pick out where you'll be starting from and working either up or working down from. Remember, as this game it does have a 60 FPS cap, if you're hitting a solid 50, 60-ish FPS, there's really no reason to lower the rest of your settings. And if you're comfortably hitting 60, you should come back here and definitely raise some of them to get a better experience. Currently, at the time of recording and the time of release, texture filtering doesn't seem to do anything while you're in-game, and it has pretty much no impact on FPS at all. Looking between these options here, there's pretty much no difference except for the road changing a bit in texture, but when we actually get in-game, it doesn't seem to have an impact at all. This is probably broken for now and may have a bigger impact in the future, so for now set it to whatever you want and move on. Shadows is a super important option, as setting this down to the lowest option, being off, makes the game look really strange, and I'd recommend keeping this at a minimum of low. At low, you can expect a maybe 5 or 6 FPS drop from completely off, and moving all the way up to high, a 15-ish FPS drop from low. Ultimately, it comes down to your preference. To be honest, low to medium is quite a big jump, but medium to high to ultra, there's practically no difference between these last three options other than a handful of FPS that you'll be losing, maybe about five or so. So I'd recommend leaving this at medium, but if you're clawing for FPS, changing it down to low may gain you a few FPS, but the looks definitely just aren't there as they are in medium. Then geometry, there's practically no difference while you're in-game FPS-wise as any graphics card with a handful of VRAM, which is pretty much all of the modern graphics cards, should comfortably be able to handle the high or even ultra option here. Simply clicking between them, you can notice a few objects popping out of reality and back in unless you're on a super low end system simply leave this at ultra and move on you'll notice practically no fps difference unless you've got a tiny amount of vram available then vegetation this game you will be driving around a lot obviously 
And a lot of the time you'll be going through densely packed forests with tons and tons of vegetation. It really is your preference as to what option you want it set to here, but ultimately having it on low will give you the best FPS, but it is really situational. The difference between low and high for this option is going to be very minimal FPS wise when you're in game. Once again, if you have a reasonable amount of VRAT, this game is surprisingly well optimized when it comes to vegetation, but obviously it'll be very situational as for where you are in game, how much is loaded at once, and of course your physical hardware. Having this on medium gives you a ton of extra foliage, but having it set to high, there's practically no difference between these two options, and when you're in game, there's very little FPS difference. So leave this at medium if you like a more densely packed map with vegetation, otherwise drop it to low and move on. For me, I'll leave this on medium. Then environment. This has a very, very tiny impact on gameplay and how things look. Obviously from low to medium, we see the biggest jump, especially with shadows and I think ambient occlusion, but anything beyond this, there's very little difference in actual visual quality. So ultimately between low and medium is where you'll be picking. You can comfortably leave this higher up and you'll notice very few FPS gained by pushing it lower, if not none at all. Medium's probably where you wanna leave it on super low end systems, otherwise push it higher and you should be happy with it. Then terrain. Once again, on a graphics card with any meaningful amount of VRAM, probably four gigabytes or above, you'll comfortably be able to play on ultra here as there's very, very little impact on how the game actually looks. I would assume most of the difference is going to be seen over long distance. Between low and medium, there's literally no difference here except for a bit in the road ahead. Then medium to high, the entire road seems to shift in texture and high to ultra. Once again, very, very little impact. I'd probably recommend leaving this on high, if not ultra. You'll notice very few FPS lost, especially if you're running relatively new hardware. Then volumetric FX. The volumetric FX option here has a minimal impact on how the game looks, and once again, Again, a minimal impact on FPS between low, medium, and high. If you push it up to ultra, you may notice some weird FPS hitching and certain lag spikes in different areas, but ultimately, leaving this on high is going to leave you with a smoother experience, as ultra does come with a few extra costs hardware-wise, which could cause stuttering, frame drops, etc. So I'd recommend leaving this at high at the best. Then depth of field, this is something I personally despise, and I'd recommend turning it off completely, unless you like depth of field, in which case you can leave it on. The higher you push it, the more clear things will be in the depth of field, as in the more high quality it'll be, but pushing it to ultra, things suddenly get a lot more blurry for some reason. I would assume they're just using different techniques of blurring things in the distance at different speeds. Ultimately, it's just a blurry background, so pushing this up higher is probably not going to make a huge impact at all, and that is of course reflected FPS-wise. Then motion blur, what is a racing game without motion blur? Having this on is going to make the cars feel a lot faster, so I wouldn't recommend turning it off completely unless you're someone who suffers from motion sickness. Turning this option down to off can help improve your symptoms. The same goes for depth of field. The difference between off and ultra is probably 1-2 to two FPS. It's a very cheap effect, so you'll basically just need to put this on whatever you feel is best. The higher you push this option, the more motion blur you'll notice, especially around close objects such as the sunflowers at the side of the screen here. Low for a very subtle effect and ultra for a much more pronounced effect that'll make the game feel a lot faster. Then ambient occlusion. There's a small FPS impact when you flick from SSAO to SSAO plus, but between SSAO and off, you'll probably notice literally no difference on relatively new hardware. Try it out for yourself in game. Playing with off makes the shadows appear a little bit weird, but playing with SSAO turned on, everything seems a ton more realistic, especially the shadow under the car, in the arches of the building, etc., and even trees, making them feel more full. If you can have the setting on, I'd highly recommend keeping it on SSAO at the lowest option, otherwise SSAO plus on higher end, and of course if you're really clawing for FPS, set this down to off, but it's only going to gain you one, maybe two FPS FPS in actual gameplay. Then down to screen space reflection. This usually comes with very little FPS impact, but as this is a racing game, there's tons of shiny roads and things that can reflect, especially moving past at high speeds. So an FPS impact is probably going to be noticed as you push this option higher. If you set it down to off, things look a little bit weird and plasticky, especially water. Low, 
it's a little bit improved, but medium things look infinitely better than before and high a little bit better. But the only thing you're really going to notice between medium and high is maybe that the roads get a little bit more shiny, but you do lose a handful more FPS. If you get around 50 with it off, you'll get around 40, 42, 44 with it set to low. The same goes for medium. There's very little difference between these two options, surprisingly. And up to high, you'll notice probably an extra further one or two FPS drop from there. So if you can afford to have this on, it's definitely worthwhile having this set to medium, if not higher. Otherwise, you can crank it down, but things are going to look a heck of a lot more plastic. If you're playing the game at 1080p on relatively new hardware, you'll very easily be able to play it on pretty much the max video settings. But if you're playing this at 4K or on low, Lower end hardware, you may need to lower some of the options somewhat closely to what I've set them as here. I'll quickly scroll through them if you'd like to copy my settings. Ultimately, if you're comfortably sitting at around 50, 60 FPS, do come back here and raise some of these options for a much better experience. Those mainly being texture filtering when it starts working, shadows, geometry, vegetation, as well as screen space reflection. These are the ones that you're mainly going to notice a bigger visual impact. But ultimately, it is a very good point when it comes to FPS. FPS, running on relatively new hardware, you'll notice that things go by pretty comfortably. Do note that changing some of these options does need a full game restart. So before I get to benchmarking my FPS, I'll make sure to restart the game with these current settings here as at least volumetric FX, terrain, as well as texture filtering all require a full restart of the game in order to actually see the difference. But once again, texture filtering doesn't seem to have any kind of tangible impact. It may be broken for now. So with everything set, I'll save this and head back and restart the game. Ultimately, running with overkill hardware at 2K, I'm going to comfortably sit at 60 FPS with practically no frame drops with my current optimized settings. And of course, on lower end hardware, you should be sitting with comfortable FPS as well. There'll be very minimal impact FPS wise between these optimized settings and the lowest option. But if you were to push it up to ultra, you'll notice practically no visual difference. And the only thing you will notice is a huge drop in FPS and probably more stuttering too. So we'll head back to options, video, and run the benchmark with our optimized settings. There we go, super comfortable, super good FPS, 54 minimum, and we're definitely hitting the FPS cap with a solid 58 and 61 FPS. We'll head back and push the options on the quality tab from custom to ultra, so everything's maxed out. We'll even push up motion blur because why not? We'll back out and restart the game entirely just to make sure all of our settings are saved. We'll head back to options options, video, and benchmark once more with all of our ultra options selected here. And well, I wasn't expecting an FPS that low, but there's definitely a huge difference. But as for a visual difference, there's very little between the optimized settings and the game absolutely maxed out. So the optimized settings definitely made a huge difference and pushing it anything lower than the optimized settings really isn't necessary unless you're clawing for some extra FPS. Anyways, that's really about it for the super quick guide. So hopefully you found it useful. That's about just as far as we can push it without lifting the 60 fps cap somehow but anyways thank you all for watching my name's been troubleshoot and i'll see you all next time ciao